I'm Sarah Wolf. I'm a Sea Grant Policy Fellow working with the Surf Rider Foundation on aquaculture marine debris. We're here today at Pool Slough on the property of Oregon Oyster Farms, cleaning up polystyrene, rope, and other plastic debris commonly used in oyster farming. These polystyrene floats are used beyond aquaculture, but here they support vertical rope lines that grow single oysters, which are the ones served at your table on the half shell. In Oregon, any polystyrene floating on a waterway is required to be encapsulated, but thin plastic coverings often fail in our harsh coastal conditions. And with the arrival of an invasive isopod that bores into the foam, these materials are breaking down faster than ever. Surfrider Foundation's mission is to protect and enjoy the world's ocean waves and beaches, and that includes stopping pollution at its source. Our Newport chapter has led cleanups like this for years, but our goal is to make cleanups unnecessary, and that's why we're partnering directly with Oregon Oyster Farms to clean up, test better materials, and create lasting change. I'm Max Weigartz. I'm a fifth generation oyster farmer. My family started farming oysters in the Willapa Bay, you know, close to 100 years ago. I grew up working on my dad's oyster farm, as well as working my mom's oyster hatchery in Neatarts. Now I've been in the oyster industry working in it full time, like as my career, for closing in on three years. After my dad passed away, I inherited 50% of the Pearl Point Oyster Farm in Neatarts. And then I bought the other half from Lou, and he's been my mentor, you know, through all of it coaching me how to sell the oysters, grow, always there for advice. After I bought him out of Pearl Point, I remember we had a conversation down here in Newport and he asked me, he's like, well, you got the small one, you wanna come try out the big one? So starting in January, I started working for Lou, working in the office and kind of learning the ropes on how to manage the farm from him. My name is Sinu and I came to the US in 1992 and when I was 30 years old, now I'm 63. I came to the U.S. to work on my doctor degree uh, at the Oregon State University, Hadfield Marine Science Center. Thanks for Surf Rider and uh, Sarah from Surf Rider to organize the event. I'm the owner of the Oregon Oyster Farm. I've been here over 20 some years. The farming not only can produce the protein uh, resources for human consumption, but also can improve the ecosystem and uh, diversify the species. And it's a very create a great habitat for a lot of creatures in this dynamic uh, estuary. However, we also have these mankind activities. We have some impact in the mother nature. I'm Chris Langdon. I'm a professor of fisheries at the Hatfield Marine Science Center here on the Oregon coast. And I spent about 40 years or so working in oyster aquaculture. As we progressed into the 21st century or the latter part of the 20th century, plastics have become more and more prevalently used because it's very durable and they don't rot. So here in the Pacific Northwest, rotting, wood rot is very usually very fast. So the flip side, the downside of that, of course, is that plastics hang around in the environment for a long period of time. When these structures are built, they're fine, but then gradually over time they, they degrade. And so one of the problems we have is these burrowing isopods bore into polystyrene when it's exposed to seawater. So if the polystyrene is wrapped in plastic, isopods have a much more difficult time. But plastic tends to tear, and as soon as the tear occurs, the isopods get busy. And they can de degrade a float fairly quickly in, in a, less than a year, whereas normally they would last perhaps uh, five or ten years even. And of course, when these polystyrene floats degrade, a lot of the polystyrene particles are released into the environment, and, and they are a big problem for all kinds of organisms that um, tend to pick them up and eat them. This is an, an alternative way where the polystyrene is encased in these fairly thick plastic crates. So the chances of polystyrene escaping from this crate is much less likely than escaping from a, a polystyrene block that is wrapped in plastic. This is a, one approach to reducing the chances of polystyrene being lost into the environment from these oyster rafts. So lots of changes here. A new generation of oyster farmers are starting and they're bringing new ideas and new approaches to sustainable oyster farming. In an effort to be more sustainable, we're looking into some different materials for that. But you know, finding a material that's strong enough to survive the salt water 
and also it gets more weight as the oysters grow but also if it breaks off is biodegradable in three years presents a unique issue. So we've been working with Daniel. He's the artist in residence at Hatfield and has been a tremendous resource to us, bringing us some new rope materials as well as some other things. We're trying to test new materials going in the next three years to eliminate our use of the single use yellow rope. And if they break off, it'll be a biodegradable material. But I hope that while you're waiting, you realize that when we take this rope, if we can prove that for one, it works, it's highly durable, and then we can get the price point down. There's no reason that any other oyster farmers wouldn't choose to use this rope as well. And so if we can produce a good proof of concept here in Yaquina that this rope is effective and that we can bring down the cost, this could not just be a change for Yaquina, but also a change for the Pacific Northwest and further. My name's Kate Goodwin, and I work with Oregon Sea Grant Marine Education, and I'm based at Hatfield Marine Science Center. I've been learning so much about little pieces of yellow rope that end up on beaches and working with school children to try to quantify their appearance on coastal beaches and our river banks and find out how to prevent this type of marine debris at the source. Just hearing from the farm about the things that they're planning to address this issue and working side by side with community members to clean up this mess and work to prevent it from occurring in the future. Hey, my name is Charlie Flyman. I'm the Oregon Policy Manager for Surfrider Foundation. Surfrider Foundation's Plastic Pollution Initiative really works on all different levels from stewardship and action in our communities doing beach cleanups, um, all the way to the source level of plastic. We're working with our industry partners like we are today to stop pollution before it enters the environment, even working on laws at the federal and state level. I would love to say that we're gonna put those in tomorrow and the problem will be solved. We have to test them for a certain amount of time. Minimum two years, hopefully three. I want you to know that your Saturday morning is not in vain. We are trying to make, uh, you know, changes. We don't want you going home feeling like you treated a symptom and, you know, the root cause is not going to change at all. Oyster farming has long been a treasured tradition here on the Oregon coast, but when policy or these materials fall short, this project has really shown that it's up to the community to lead and we've proven that we can do better and that it's easier to drive change when we work together. So with support from Lincoln County Solid Waste District, our local haulers like Thompson Sanitary Service and Doll Disposal, Midcoast Watersheds Council and volunteers who've come out for these cleanups from across the state, we're working toward real lasting change so that future generations can enjoy Yaquina Bay oysters just like we do today.